Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. I have a great problem for you today. It's number 23 on the 53 Math MTEL. Nice problem to review some things in data analysis involving frequency distribution. Um, this would be a problem you'd want to look at if you're preparing for an elementary, middle school, or high school teacher certification exam. Um, one of the things you're going to notice when we talk about frequency distribution you're always going to see a set of data points and you're going to see a series of frequency distribution charts. Now just to make some quick observations, uh, what a frequency distribution chart is doing is it's organizing the data points. It's, um, and in this case right here, it's looking to see how many data points fall into a given range. So in this one right here, we're looking at how many values from this data set fall within 875 and 1000. If we looked at it, we'd see that in this range, two data points in our given numbers fit in. So we'd say it happens twice. Now, I'm going to read the problem. Number 27, use the information below to answer the question that follows. They give you the data set. The weights and pounds of 20 giant pumpkins that are entered into a contest are shown in the box above. Which of the following tables represents a properly constructed frequency distribution that organizes the data in five classes? Okay, now let's go back. We're talking about pumpkins. And not really just pumpkins, giant pumpkins! Let me use orange here. These pumpkins are so big! They're so big, they're like 1,500 pound pumpkins. Huge pumpkins. Okay, there's my pumpkins here. They're so big that Farmer Joe here, or, 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 or however you want to say it, this pumpkin is gigantic. And so all these farmers have come, and they put their gigantic pumpkin and measured them, and these are the top 20 giant pumpkins that we're looking for. Okay, and they want to organize the data. This is the context of the problem. And you got to visualize this. All right, I get it. I've never heard of a 1,500 pound uh, pumpkin before, but I'll buy it. Now we have to look at content of the problem. This is the math stuff that you're going to have to be looking out for. Um, and this is all about frequency. It's kind of split. A frequency distribution. Not only frequency distribution, it wants you to come up with a, um, which table represents a properly constructed frequency distribution. So that means we're going to look at these tables and find out which one was organized correctly. A frequency distribution table has to have two elements to it in order for it to be properly constructed. The first, when you look at these range, when you look at these uh, tables here. The first is that the range on the table, all right, uh, let me make sure I'm using the right marker. The range has to be consistent in each one of the, uh, each one of the distributions. So look at the range of this one. Between 875 and 1,000, we're going up by 125. And between 1,001 and 1,126 pounds, it's again about 125. And you, you would go through this and say, yep, same range, same range, same range, same range. Um, and then you'd be like, this one right here, well, this is 121. Uh, and this is a red flag. The range is not quite the same. It's a little red flag there. Look at the range here. This is 175. This one right here, this is 100. This one's almost 200. This one's 150, so I think, you, I think you, you get what I'm saying here. We could cross out B because it's got such a funky range. All the ranges are different, which means it's sort of not fair. You got some ranges that are really big, which kind of would explain why there's so many pumpkins in that range, and there's others that are really small, so they're not evenly distributed. So options like B could be automatically eliminated just because the ranges aren't right. I think if you do the same thing for D here, this goes up by 200, this by 100, 
You could cross that out because the ranges are too high. All right, let me clear them. You can pause the videos right now and you can see why we're able to eliminate uh, B and D a little faster. All right, so ranges don't work, ranges don't work. Now we're, uh, we're gonna look more closely at, um, at A and C. First, check to see if the ranges are, what the ranges are. About 120, 120, 120, 120, and guess what, 120. Well, that's, you know, right there, that's good. The ranges are all the same. But let's see if there was something, and by the way, C is the answer. But let's see what else uh, might be a red flag. Notice how in the data set, our original data set, our first point in the data set is, is close to 900. That means when we're distributing the information, our first um, dis distribution should start around 900. And if we're, if we're going up by 120, then it should be from 900 to let's say 1020. And our last point, it's close to 1500, so the last range should be approximately close to that last data point. Answer choice A, uh, you know, it's starting very low. And the first 25 pounds here, up to 900, there are no values, so it's a little skewed. Um, and that would be a giveaway that this one is also wrong because uh, our, our, ran our, we're st our ranges are set up in such a way where we're not really uh, close to our first and last data or our first uh, data point, so we'll skew some of the numbers. Um, and uh, one of the ranges here is too small. Okay, team, I hope you like thinking about gigantic pumpkins. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall, we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're gonna be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Tumbling down